This is a project. It's a personal project, so I just work on it from time to time when waiting for glue to dry or something. It's uh, it's really old. I think it's well, it's definitely turn of the century. It could be like 1916 or something. There's not a serial Easy. number that I've actually found. Um, but there's a, a is this lot. Brazilian? It's Brazilian. And why are there so many holes? So that's what I want to know too. Um, it's been worked on a lot, like over the years. If you look in here, there's just glue Whoa. just like dripped all over. Actually, this on the inside is like way cleaner <laughs> now. I've already put probably like close to, t not 10, probably eight hours in this and the back that I took all of the stuff off of. Um, so it's like the Martin style. The r yeah. old ribbons are still in here. Um, and all the the ribbons do is it's supposed to stop the cracks. Okay. So if you see, it does kind of work. They removed the old ribbons that were in here when they glued some other stuff in, and the crack did stop there. Okay. So it's it's not really for like structural integrity. It's just to make sure that when you have solid sides, it will probably crack at some point. And if it does crack, it'll run and it'll hopefully stop at one of those ribbons. So um, I guess it didn't and they took out these ribbons and it cracked across the end block. I mean, so I can just move all that. So they took more duck cloth and glued duck cloth. Uh, just... all, so I've already removed all the duck cloth and then on top of the duck cloth, they put huge blocks of spruce in here and sank. These were all screw holes. But oh the weird thing is, is that this side is only like 75, 60 thousandths thick, and they put, they drilled the screw holes like all the way through. So it was only holding on like the really small ones. Like that was holding, that was holding, oh, <laughs> that was holding. So the duck cloth was doing most of the work. Um, I actually crazy. kept the blocks, they're over here because they're pretty insane. In here, in there. In here. And because it's really old spruce and I just, couldn't bring myself to throw it away yet. So all of these little blocks, you can see the amount of glue that has been dripped all over these things. Um, they were all stuck on the inside of that. And then the outside was just filled with a wood putty. So what I'm gonna do is clean up the inside completely. Um, get rid of all the glue and get down to bare wood. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna glue in a bunch of tiny little um, ribs and I'm probably going to do it out of uh, mahogany maybe walnut walnuts closer to the color um, and that'll be perpendicular grain lines to that so that'll help um, also I'll do a bunch of them especially down in the bout where you won't even see through the sound hole but that'll just make sure that those cracks won't continue and then I'm going to I have a bunch of tiny little scraps of Brazilian and I'm going to try to match grain Oh my gosh. And like make little dots and um, that is fill all of those. And I'm gonna rebrace the top. Uh, yeah, I, I was one. That was that was a question. Yeah. Was if you rebrace the top? Ow! You got a you okay? metal thing <laughs> yeah. there. Yes, I um, did. So if if you rebrace the top, I feel like you'd get a lot more juice out of this thing. Yeah. So a couple things. This is the bridge plate, and as you can see. Um, it's just worn through. Yeah, it's spruce. So oh, it's okay. real soft. So it's worn through. So this guitar with this bridge plate here and these holes, those holes are very old. This bracing pattern doesn't scream uh, steel string, but these holes, old holes in it, steel. They, they used to be a ste uh, steel string. Yeah, so, so and you got some good repair in there. Yeah, there's uh, all kinds of repair that's been done to this. I've, and most of these braces are loose in some place or yeah. another. So I'm gonna remove the old braces. I'm gonna X brace it. Um, dude, this and, thing's gonna scream. Yeah, it'll be pretty cool. And it's, dude, I think it's it's cool that you're even like trying this to is save the back. It. Oh, look at that. Dude, you get your own pre-war. <laughs> Yeah, so I've been able to find, you're good at digging up guitar stuff. Yeah. Uh, Emory, E-M-O-R-Y. Yeah. Uh, cool. And it's not like the Fender Emory thing. Okay. There's like, that's when you look up Emory guitar, like yeah. that's what comes up. This was made by um, 
some department store in the Midwest in like the late 1800s, early 1900s, wow. and this is the brand guitar that came out. So it was probably manufactured elsewhere, like in Chicago, where yeah. everything else was manufactured in those days. Uh, and it was probably manufactured by another company. I mean, it could yeah. have been any number of things, like, um, what's the, the big one? Um, not Bruno, but... Uh, the one that everyone wants now, the Larson Brothers. Yeah, Larson Brothers. So it could have been something like that, another company uh, making it. It um, could have could have been a Washburn too. It could have been a Washburn. They were aren't they? Weren't, they were in Chicago. Yeah. Around the same time. So I, I don't owned, know that it was Chicago. It's I'm just a handful. I feel there were a lot of turn of the century, yeah. peanutty, double O size, single O size parlor guitars came out of there, and this is the only thing. Well, it's upside down here. I don't have anyone to find. And it says, genuine, Emery, <laughs> something, registered, trademark. Yeah, they trademarked. Yeah, dude, this thing is cool. I've owned a handful of the Washburns from the same like turn yeah. of the century. They are Brazilian and you know, whatever spruce they had. Yeah. None of them have been magical, but you've got the secret of like, I can rebrace it and fix it. I'm going to rebrace it. I like I mean, it's, it's really kind of, well. It's hard to see now because there's still a bunch of finish on it, but it's really well quartered old Brazilian. Um, and you just can't find that anymore. It's super like inky and like these purples and yeah, black. We'll still have some glue I need to take off, but this is a lot less than what used to be on this. Dude, <laughs> so, so and where'd you find this one? Um, my brother and mother got it. For me for Christmas years ago, Dude, just as a guitar cool. to fix up. It was oh, cool. on, on I mean, eBay it's or no, something. It's no 70s Japanese Epiphone, but. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, there's a lot of glue on here. Um, and that hole is from me steaming the neck off. Okay. And it's missing its cap right now, heel cap. But. Um, was it a dovetail? Well, it's not really a dovetail. There, There's never been. Yeah anything else here and if you look at the bottom of the mortise this has never been filled another issue is that the head and end blocks are spruce which is not really good you want something you want a, a denser material um, a hardwood because there's a lot of tension on that yeah but they doesn't just seem like enough meat the to... reason that it was so hard to take off is because the only thing that was holding this on was like a metric ton of glue <laughs> that was in there so i'm gonna have to refit it yeah but uh it's strange dude it looks beautiful i mean like once this thing's like settled and sorted i mean from 10 feet away it looked like a 0028 or yeah yeah, yeah. 28 21 something like that because it doesn't have the binding on the back oh, that's true. But, um but, but yeah it's, dude it's got so much freaking mojo yeah this and this awesome. binding is also ivory like actual it's real ivory Lifant. um and i and it's missing some pieces so i might have to like mess with some old piano keys yeah to put a chunk oh yeah on you got some just get somebody with big arms to play this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and this badge um, is missing. And I've only been able to find... So a lot of the information, actually, at the Smithsonian, there's an Emery guitar a lot like this uh, that was played by Mississippi John Hurt at like the 1963 no Newport Folk Festival. Oh, cool. And it's not his. It's like the guy that that went down to Mississippi and like and quote, him, rediscovered yeah. him and brought him back because at, you know, early sixties folk was getting huge mm -hmm. again and old blues and stuff. So, uh, he didn't even know he was like a living legend at that point. So I guess they found him and, and kind of, um, brought him, yeah. brought him out of, uh, that area and he didn't have a guitar at that time. So the guy that did it gave him th his guitar to use, which was an Emery that is a lot like this. And that Emery is in the Smithsonian. Cool. So that's most of the information I've been able to find on these guitars yeah. is that one other guitar. Cool. Yeah. yeah. If, if you guys know anything else about Emery guitars, uh, let us know as so I'll put Ben's contact info down below in mine. Yeah. This is amazing and cool. One last thing I noticed is that the tuners are backwards, right? Yeah, uh, 
these are... or They're not backwards, but they're backwards orientation to what we expect. We expect like the gear to be on the bottom side and the worm on top. That's correct. Uh, but a lot of people used to do that. You see that a lot on older guitars. Mm -hmm. And like that's how they were originally fit, which is counterintuitive to me. But uh, another thing is that these are not the original tuners. Yeah, Someone yeah. slapped these on a while ago. But, but they're still, those look like the 40s, 50s. Yeah. So, but yeah, when this guitar was 50 years old or something crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. It would be cool to find an actual date on it, but um, no, if it was ever here, I no can't chance. see it anymore because it was covered up by glue and duck cloth. So, yeah. you know. But it's a mystery, but now it's it's here. Yeah, 